Hello. In this video we will be considering how organisations can manage their foreign exchange risk. Steps taken to reduce or eliminate a company's exposure to foreign currency risk is known as hedging. Initially, let's be clear how an exchange rate works. An exchange rate is simply the price of one currency in terms of another. A spot rate just means the rate of exchange right now. For example, a spot rate of exchange of $2 to £1 means that £1 sterling has an equivalent value of $2. This means I could exchange £1 for $2 or $2 for £1. Banks will do this for us for a charge. They make their money by offering us a different price for buying as opposed to selling. A shopkeeper does exactly the same thing. They might buy a tin of soup from their supplier for 75 cents and sell it to their customer for a dollar. They make 25 cents profit every time they then buy and sell a tin of soup. Banks offer what is known as a spread. This just means two prices, a buy and a sell price. For example, they may offer a spread of 1.3 euros to 1.25 euros per dollar. This means if they're buying dollars, they will only pay 1.25 euros, but they'll sell dollars to you for 1.3 euros. Often it's tricky to decide which is the right price to use. Remember this golden rule, always pick the worst rate for you. That's because it's the best rate for the bank and the bank always wins. The worst rate for you means if you're selling currency, you'll get the smallest amount back and if you're buying currency, it costs you the most. If I am an American and I export to Europe and my European customer owes me 1 million euros, suppose the exchange rate when they pay me is 1.25 to 1.3 euros per dollar. When my European customer pays me, I will need to divide by either 1.25 or 1.3 to work out how many dollars the bank will give me when I sell them the euros. If I divide by 1.25, this would give me 1 million divided by 1.25 equals $800,000. If I divide by 1.30, this gives me 1 million divided by 1.3 equals $769,231. This is smaller than $800,000, so the 1.3 is the worst rate for me, and this is the one that the bank will give me. If we made our sale on credit, the spot rate of exchange will probably move between the point of sale and when the customer pays. So unfortunately, we cannot guarantee what the dollar value of that receipt will be. Now, let's consider ways of trying to remove our exposure to that fluctuating spot rate. There are some simple ideas, sometimes known as internal hedging techniques, so-called because external contracts are not used. Firstly, as an American exporter, we could invoice customers in US dollars. We therefore won't be exposed to any foreign exchange. Unfortunately, all you're doing here is passing the risk 100% onto our customer. Our European customer will have to pay a certain number of dollars when they settle their bill. As the spot rate moves, the amount of euros this will cost them will fluctuate. The customer may choose to buy from elsewhere if we impose this risk upon them. Secondly, netting and matching. If we export to Europe from America and also import from Europe, then we only need to worry about the net position as we are matching incomes with expenses here. If the exchange rate moves against us on the receipt, it will move in our favour on the payment and vice versa. Netting can be considered at a group level. One subsidiary could export to Europe and another subsidiary could import from Europe. And even though they are each individually exposed, only the net group position needs to be considered. This overall view can be compiled by a group treasury function. This is convenient if possible, however having receipts and payments relating to the same foreign location may be unlikely. Next, let's consider leading and lagging. Leading means paying early and lagging means paying late. 
Suppose we're an American exporter who have a customer in Europe who's due to pay us in two months' time. If we also happen to have a European supplier that we're due to pay in three months' time, we may choose to lead and pay the supplier in two months' time to match the timing of the receipts from our customer. This means the movement in the spot rate between the point of sale and the point of payment will be the same, as we are ensuring we pay our supplier at the same time as we receive money from our customer. However, paying suppliers early is bad news for our cash flow, and paying them late is bad news for our supplier relationship. Let's now consider some external hedging techniques. These involve contracting with third parties to help manage our risk. We'll consider forward exchange contracts, money market hedges, and the use of derivatives such as futures and options. A forward contract is a contract agreed with the bank to exchange a certain amount of foreign currency for a specified rate on a specified date. These are common in practice because they are easy to arrange. It's a conversation with the bank and it gives certainty. From the moment the contract is signed, you know exactly what the exchange rate is going to be relating to that future transaction. The banks will quote a price when you go to see them to arrange the contract. This might look like a spot rate, for example, 1.25 to 1.35 euros per dollar. Forward rates also have a spread like spot rates do, only the difference between the two prices is larger than the spot rate as the bank extracts more compensation for the administration of the contract and the risk they take on. The spot rate may be different from the forward rate when the contract is executed. Alternatively, the forward rate may be quoted as an adjustment to the spot. For example, Today's spot rate may be 1.25 to 1.35 euros per dollar with a forward adjustment of 0.3 to 0.2 cents premium. Firstly, a premium needs to be deducted from the spot rate and a discount needs to be added on. You might like to remember this using ADIS, add a discount. This might feel counterintuitive, but the reason we deduct a premium is that as the currency is at a premium you get less of them to the dollar. So the forward rates implied by this forward adjustment would be calculated as follows. So we've got spot rates of 1.25 and 1.35 euros per dollar. We then deduct the forward premium of 0 0.003 dollars and 0 0.002 dollars to give us forward rates of 1.2470 and 1.3480 euros per dollar. And again, pick the worst rate for you. If I'm selling euros, I'll divide by 1.3480 to work out how many dollars I'll receive. And if I'm buying euros, I'll divide by 1.2470 to work out how many dollars I'll need to pay. Forward contracts fix the rate for us but they are a binding obligation and therefore unavoidable if, for example, our customer defaults. And they're tailored to us. We are a named party in the contract, as is the bank. They therefore offer no flexibility and the contract can't be sold on. Another external hedging technique is a money market hedge, sometimes known as a synthetic forward. The reason we're exposed to spot rate movements is that cash is going to cross borders at some point in the future as opposed to today. We can eliminate risk by borrowing the money now and crossing borders today instead. This is perhaps easiest to see by talking through an example. I am a US exporter and I've made a sale to my European customer. They are due to pay me in three months time. Suppose the current spot rate is 1.25 to 1.35 euros per dollar and interest rates in the two locations are as follows. We have US and European borrowing rates at 4% and 5% and lending rates or deposit rates at 2% and 3% per annum. These rates are generally quoted on a per annum basis in questions. Now let's suppose the value of the sale is 1 million euros. 
Let's work through a standard diagram to help us. On this diagram we have the US and Europe across the top and then a timeline down the side now and in three months time. Starting with the end in mind we'll receive 1 million euros in three months time. We would love to bring that money across border today but we haven't got it. That's okay we can borrow the euros to bring it back. Unfortunately the amount we borrow will have to be less than a million euros because the amount we borrow will accrue interest charges over the three month period. The European borrowing rate is 5% per year or 5% divided by 4 equals 1.25% for the three months. So we'll discount the 1 million euros by 1.25%. So this means we need to borrow 1 million euros divided by 1.0125 is 987,654 euros. This will then grow into a 1 million euro liability that we can pay off with the 1 million euro receipt from our customer in three months time. We then bring back the money we've borrowed to the USA at today's spot rate. The worst rate for us is to divide by 1.35 to give us the smallest number of US dollars in our hands. This gives us $731,596 today in the USA. To get a comparable dollar amount for our receipt in three months time, we assume that the US dollars are put on deposit in the US. This will earn us 2% per annum or half a percent for the three month period. We therefore end up with $735,254 in three months time. This means we have achieved for ourselves an effective exchange rate of 1 million euros divided by $735,254 or 1.3601 euros to the dollar. A similar approach can be used to hedge payments to an overseas supplier rather than a receipt from an overseas customer. The only difference is that the money would be borrowed in the US and sent over to Europe to put on deposit there. This deposit would then be used to pay the European supplier in three months time. Money market hedges are often used by banks and in many ways achieve a similar result to a forward contract perhaps with a bit more flexibility. However, they require management effort to set up overseas deposits and loans, which may not be easy in all cases. Derivatives can be used to help reduce or eliminate foreign currency risk. We'll consider futures and options here. You should note that numbers are not examinable, only an overview is required. Firstly, futures. Suppose we know we have a foreign currency receipt in the future. We can effectively agree right now a rate with the futures market. We need to pay a deposit to an exchange in order for this to happen. When we receive the money from our customer, we would exchange that at the prevailing spot rate. However, the futures market will compensate us if we make a loss due to adverse movement in the spot rate. Similarly, if the spot rate moves in our favour, the futures market will take that gain away from us. In effect, the futures market acts like a counterbalance on a seesaw. The net effect is a fixed outcome as gains and losses due to movements in the spot rate are effectively removed by the futures market. Futures give some date flexibility. For example, September futures can be used at any time up to the end of September. So if the customer pays a little late, this can usually be accommodated. However, futures are only available in large standard contract sizes and a deposit needs to be made and potentially topped up if the futures contract is building up losses in the run-up to the customer paying their bill. Futures can be used equally to hedge payments as well as receipts. Next, options. An option gives the buyer a right, but not an obligation, to buy or sell something at an agreed price. 
an option to sell is called a put option and an option to buy is called a call option. So, for example, an option to sell euros would be known as a euro put option. If the price agreed in the option, known as the strike price or exercise price, is better than the spot rate when the customer pays, then the option will be exercised and the holder of that option will receive the agreed exchange rate in the option, the strike price. If, however, the spot rate is more favourable than the strike price in the option, then the option can be abandoned and ignored. The holder of the option can then use the more beneficial spot rate. There is a price to pay for this flexibility. An option only seems to have upside potential for the holder and no downside. The seller of the option charges a premium at the start that's non-refundable, a bit like selling an insurance policy. An option, if it's exchange traded, gives date flexibility like a futures contract does and it has upside potential with no downside risk. It's also useful for transactions if they aren't definite. For example, if we tender for a contract, we could hedge the offered tender price using an option that we could then just abandon if we fail to win the tender. However, exchange traded options like futures are only available in large standard size contracts and the option premium makes them very expensive. Last but not least, something a little different. Suppose we invest in a foreign subsidiary. This means we'll have a foreign currency asset on our statement of financial position. As foreign exchange rates move, then the value of this asset will increase or decrease due to movement in that spot rate. If we finance this investment with a loan also denominated in that foreign currency, this will cushion our exposure. As the value of the asset increases, so will the value of the liability and similar for a decrease. In summary, there are many ways of reducing or eliminating foreign currency risk and each has its own advantages and disadvantages. The treasury function of the business will need to decide what's most appropriate in the circumstances.